Hello and welcome to my list of 5 things you probably don't know about Dark Souls. This video only discusses Dark Souls 1 and not any of its sequels, and all footage is from the remastered version of the game. Also, timestamps and links to relevant videos are in the description. With that out of the way, let's move on to number 1. The first item on this list is something I think can very easily go unnoticed. If you look closely at the icon for the rare ring of sacrifice, you can see that it has what looks like three silhouettes on its face. The identity of these figures is not readily apparent, but we do know that the ring itself is related to Velka, as it mentions her in its item description, and humanity, since you can get one by trading a twin humanity with Snuggly the Crow. One thing that makes this trio particularly mysterious is the fact that there are not many groups of three in the lore of Dark Souls. Usually you would see groups of four, like the four Lord Souls, the four Kings, or the four Knights of Gwyn. If you want to hear some theories and speculation regarding who these figures could be, then definitely check out this video by Jake the Ashen Hollow, link in the description. It's common knowledge that you cannot harm the ghosts in the New Londo Ruins without first activating a transient curse. But did you know that if you don't have the transient curse effect, every hit from them will stagger you, no matter how much poise you have? Only when you use a transient curse do their attacks affect your poise in the typical way. This mechanic was probably intended as one of the ways the game would disincentivize new players from going to New Londo right after finishing the Asylum. After defeating Gwyn and leaving the Kiln of the First Flame, you will get the Dark Lord ending. It is not predominantly shown in the cutscene, but in this ending, the Lord Vessel is now destroyed and shattered to pieces, while the roots it was placed on are charred and burned. Deep in the catacombs you can find Vamos, the blacksmith. Talk to him and he might say this. I've told you I have nothing to discuss. If I have anything to offer, it's my smithing and nothing more. I'd be of more help with that ember from New London, of course. It's a shame the whole place was flooded. Oddly, if you get the very large ember, which is the only ember that can be found in New Londo, then Vamos will say he cannot work with embers of that kind. Hmm? Why, you have an ember, do you? Ah, forget about it. I don't deal with that kind. What has gone wrong with embers these days? On the other hand, if you talk to Vamos while you have the large flame ember, which is gotten from Lost Isolith, he will say this. Hmm, why? Is that an ember from New Londo? And a fine ember it be. What do you say? Why not leave it with me? This discrepancy where Vamos thinks the large flame ember is from New Londo is probably just a forgotten vestige of changes that the game went through during its development rather than a meaningful lore insight. You might not expect it, but the credit sequence actually has a bunch of interesting details, especially in the voice actor section. Here we can see Lautrec has two voice actors, which is a little strange. The knight that gives you the key and the Estes flask is simply called the Knight of the Undead Asylum and is not given an actual name. And Eingi, the Chaos Servant, is just referred to as Eggbearer. Also, these two characters, which are usually referred to by the community as Male Undead Merchant and Female Undead Merchant, are actually referred to as the itinerant merchant and itinerant merchant woman, respectively, which implies that they move around like nomads. Alvina's entry refers to the Darkroot Wood, even though the area is only referred to as the Darkroot Garden throughout the game, except for when Alvina introduces herself, interestingly enough. I'm Alvina of the Darkroot Wood. And finally, the most mysterious detail here is the so-called Maiden Knight, there is no mention of anyone going by that title throughout the game, but seeing as Nico of Thoroughland is not listed here, it's most likely referring to him. Interestingly, his voice actor is Ryan Morris, who is also credited as one of the game's scriptwriters, and in various other FromSoft games. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, then check out this other one I made about 5 things you might not know about Elden Ring. By the way, I will be making more videos like this. Anyway. I'll see you in the next one.